Chad, what is your uh, second wind idea that you have? <laughs> <laughs> I've been trolling across TikTok for all the new new hot trends and <laughs> trying to keep up with Jesus. Gen Alpha. One of the things we love about you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm so I'm so hip. I'm concerned, but <laughs> and wh- what I I don't know if this is just because I'm on a certain part of the algorithm of seeing this, but it seems like a large amount of people are going to like all you can eat or like um everyone chips in on uh meat meat grilling type restaurants. Mm-hmm. Why can't I think of okay. what you'd call like a Korean barbecue place? A Korean barbecue. A Korean barbecue place. And they're they all have a dish that these young youths will enjoy where it is like, hey, here's the raw meat that you're about to put on the grill, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's being served to you on like a Barbie doll. What? Or or like a plastic skeleton that is wearing what the f- wearing the food like a like a shirt like, like a charbuterie ba- <laughs> yeah like yeah 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 like like bacon draped over <laughs> a doll so that it you're wearing the meat and then you take it off with chopsticks and you put it on the grill what that's, that's Buffalo Bill shit yeah right yeah this is practice <laughs> <laughs> not not only is it practice for serial killers it is a Laser guided uh, missile into my fear heart, which is Chad is always worried that there's plastic stuff in his food. I'm sure I've shared this on the podcast. <laughs> yes. Chad, w- worry no more. There is plastic stuff in your food. But like, okay, but I, I, I've, I've accepted microplastics. I've yeah. Accepted yeah. That. But like little Lego pieces that maybe came into my cereal because there was a mix up at the factory and the cereal <laughs> shoot got mixed up with the Lego pieces shoot. Now yep. I'm eating Legos. Constant yeah. fear. Yeah. Constant fear. Uh, uh, can I di- can I drill down on this fear real quick with yeah. you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what is the big part of the fear? Is it that you will chew plastic, or is it that you will swallow? Pl- like, what's your biggest part of the fear? Like, I, wh- I don't even get to the point of like, oh, I'll choke in the fear. It is just mm-hmm. how unnatural and how gross would it be if suddenly little pieces <laughs> okay. of plastic toys were in my mouth? <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't want to eat it either. I don't want to swallow it, but just like, <laughs> like I have very vivid memories of like eating a bowl of cereal. On a Saturday morning, and then a commercial for like Polly Pocket or Mad Max, sure. if you will, mm-hmm. Mighty Max mm-hmm. comes mm-hmm. on, and they show those little tiny plastic toys, and I go, "Ah, get yeah. the cereal away from me!" There could be Mighty Max in it. <laughs> if I drove to your house and filled a cereal box with little Lego heads, <gasps> it would be <laughs> the worst thing that could happen to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the worst thing, absolute worst <laughs> thing. And and these kids eating off of Barbie dolls with its with their like this Barbie has like a silicon hair. Right? Like, it's got synthetic <laughs> hair. Ugh. Ugh. It's not real hair. Ugh. They're not getting donated hair for these Barbies. That's that's silicon <laughs> hair. <laughs> they're taking it. Or they're, they're, maybe they are taking it. That's a good, that's a good point. <laughs> that's Mattel's big secret is they, like, kidnap people and steal their hair. <laughs> Chad, uh, I've got a solution for you. Yeah. You ready for this? The, yeah, please. The only thing you have to fear besides fear itself, is plastic being chewed and becoming mic- more microplastics for your body, which, let's yeah. face it, that's everywhere. You're, you're dealing with that part already. Yeah, I'm bre- mm-hmm. right now I'm breathing in microplastics. I so my solution mm-hmm. for you, no longer chew any food. Uh, <laughs> and if you just swallow everything whole. And then that way, any plastic that does enter you will just exit you uh, through the normal apparatus of exiting your body, and you don't have to worry about anything. So, are you telling me like gaseous or liquid forms of plastic? You gotta, you gotta write those ones off. Okay, those are in you. Fear solved. <laughs> I love Paul solving fears for us. We could start a new podcast where I solve fears. I'm yeah. down for that. Paul, I've got a fear of skunks. Oh boy, okay, I'm gonna need some time for that one. Okay, what what, well, what part well, of the skunk? Yeah, we is should. It, is it the black and white colors? Is it the Pepe Le Pew? He's going to come on too strong. Yeah, to the you? romanticism. What? I don't want to be sprayed by a skunk, but I'd like to pet a skunk. Hmm. Oh, you fear how much uh, you love them? Yeah. What if I could sell you, Kevin? Because because you know my my fear has been fixed now. Thank you, Paul. I never will feel mm-hmm. you <laughs> feel fear again. What if I could sell you, Kevin, a little special dart gun that <laughs> uh, shoots. <laughs> Like a web perfectly at a skunk's gland hole. <laughs> what? Like, it's, is it that like, visible? It, like, it's I don't know. I assume like it's it's like a Spider-Man web it that like lasts a, for eight nine seconds, eight to nine hours, and is, you can like shoot it. In is the a gland skunk hole like a video pedal. game boss with like a big red <laughs> it's ball glowing on red? It? You wait for it to flash its spot, and then it, you're like, got, gotta hit it. I was gonna propose skunk diaper, but sure, <laughs> let's go. With- <laughs> 
<laughs> gland net gun. And it only lasts eight or nine hours, and it dissolves naturally, no environmental impact, so the skunk can get back to its normal life after you're gone and petting it. Fear solved. I think the, the skunk diaper is a little more feasible, but that could also be attached to some sort of gun apparatus, because I like that part. Yeah, how are you going to put the how are you gonna put the diaper on the skunk, Kyle? Well, I think it, re- it requires someone to get glanded. So, I mean, I just, I just accept that fate. Much like how you have to accept that you're swallowing plastics at all times, yeah. I just have to accept a gland. Yeah, there are, tra- there are trade-offs to solving a fear, Chad. Yeah, sure. There's sure. always trade-offs. Well, so, yeah, you have, to, you have to let some of the evil inside you. I feel, I feel emboldened now. I, th- I think I can go on with my day, and if I met a skunk. I've got to catch. This fear has passed. That's going to be the catchphrase <laughs> for the show. <laughs> Kyle, are there any fears we can we can save you from in your life? Yeah, what does it solve any fears, Kyle? Oh no, nothing that you guys can save me from. Well, come on, come on, come on, we're pretty good at this. <laughs> All right, this feels we're two for good. two, Kyle. <laughs> uh, I am terrified of slamming my hand in a car door. Okay, that okay. is the thing that I'm terrified of. Okay, okay. Have you considered? riding a dangerous motorcycle <laughs> now that's a good idea no doors i don't hate this no doors on that no <laughs> i was thinking of similarly not a motorcycle because kevin you shouldn't ride a motorcycle it's too dangerous we need you safe buddy but <laughs> what if you had a car and you removed all the doors from it that's a cool that's actually a sick that's like a mad max car is what you're saying yeah like a yeah. mad max car yeah. you can kind of just mm-hmm. do the thing where you like let the car peel out and you just step out of it while it's still peeling out <laughs> mm-hmm this is obviously very appealing to me. I mean, this we live cool. in L.A. I mean, the weather <laughs> usually is good enough to where I could take all the doors off and it'd be okay. I okay, and I'll I've, I've got a backup one. I've got these. Yeah, yeah. I've got the skunk diapers plan. Uh, oh, sure. good for okay. your for your fear. Um, have you thought about uh, balloon or fake hands that you use for everything? <laughs> Okay, so that was, I was wondering when we were going to get to the replace my hand solution. <laughs> I have a, I am the Occam's razor of fear solving on this show. Yeah. I go for the most obvious solution. I don't hate the idea of going to a doctor and being like, replace my hands with mannequin hands so I never feel pain again. Wait, it's a per, it's a permanent, I thought it was like a one time you just put on like a, like a pad, like you put on like sock and boppers. You're talking about replacing your we hands. We live in a capitalist society, Chad. We need to be able yeah. to sell more hands. My question to you is why stop at the hands? Why not get Kyle a whole new cyborg body that feels no pain, feels no love, only knows destruction? And cannot be sprayed by skunk gland. Yeah. <laughs> it can be, but it doesn't matter. Because I have a slick rubber body that it wicks away the glands, the gland spray. Who even needs a car at that point? We'll get you a cannon that can shoot you anywhere because your body cannot be destroyed. <laughs> I should be able to turn into a car. <laughs> Go to a ripper dock and ask for the way to be able to <laughs> pet skunks and also not feel pain in my hands. These are good plans. Oh, I got you, mate. I know exactly what to do. Ch- uh, chuv, whatever they call them. Choom. Choom. It's a Choom. bummer no one played that game and knows what you're talking about. <laughs> I only watched the anime. I don't even play the game. <laughs> These are great plans. This fear has passed. <laughs> Paul, I just picture your like superimposed head <laughs> over wherever that happens. You just come in and fade. Just put it on Dr. Phil's body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Finally, Dr. Phil will be useful for something. Wait, but but Paul has passed all of our fears, but can he confront his own? My only fear is not solving every fear. Well <laughs> Damn. Eventually that fear will pass when we're all cyborg men being shot out of cannons to our next destination. My job will be complete then. <laughs> but until then, you're kind of more of like a blade daywalker where you're you're fixing yeah. other people's lives. So you can't take care of your own it keeps problem. me motivated. Yes, Chad. Wow. It's not, a, it's not like a vampire blade at all. But I don't know why I just went to that. <laughs> <laughs> Which means, listener, if you are currently not uh, a cyborg uh, that is clean of your meat body, uh, then you're causing Paul fear by being vulnerable yourself. So you know what you got to do. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> Become a cyborg, or at least like leave your mortal body, your physical b- body, <laughs> or at least Photoshop a picture of yourself as a cyborg and send it to Paul, so he feels better. About at it. least lie to me. Yeah, this fear is past. This fear has. This fear is past. This fear will pass. Oh. Uh, welcome to Goosebuds. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Goosebuds. I'm Kevin. I'm Chad. I'm Paul. 
And we are joined by a returning guest. He hasn't been here for a long, long time, but he's back to cover Goosebumps and Arl Stein books with us. Well, Fear Street book today. Uh, Kyle McVeigh. Welcome, Kyle. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It feels hey. good to be back. Welcome back, Kyle. Welcome back, Kyle. Thank you. What did we get Kyle for last time? Uh, it's been like six years. Oh my god, so. it has been. It was <laughs> yeah, it was like pre-pandemic for sure. Oh wait, I th- I feel like it was like 2016 or something. I did it early. Did I do oh a my haunted god. mask? Kyle, you did the haunted mask. Yeah. Wow, you did yeah. an early classic, um, iconic book. So we brought you back for another iconic the story. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> Fear, Fear Streets, the surprise party. We're about to make this book iconic today. I all I could think as I was reading it, and I don't know if you guys want to jump in immediately. Yeah. But I was like, Hell is yeah. this the most milk toast nothing <laughs> hook for like a, a goose? Because it feels like RL was like, I gotta write a taut thriller and with no other hook, really. Like there's nothing you know, no creepy dolls, no no haunted anything really from my perspective this is a barbie doll absolutely covered in bacon oh. <laughs> is that good like this has some meat on it like compared to the average goosebumps okay book. that's fair but i do i okay. want to go back to to kyle's taught thriller i think he thought that he needed to write a taught thriller and then proceeded to do the opposite <laughs> i i i agree that rl wanted to write a taught book boy i love using the word taught yeah uh and he had like Two cool chapters, and the rest is like, I think it's going to be about kids talking, talking to, to each, each other, other around lockers. I think it's going to be mostly that. This is 85% uh, water, a.k.a. children talking to each other about how good they look right now. <laughs> oh, my God. They love complimenting each other's looks. <laughs> they <laughs> all look so good. Oh, I was going to ask. I also got really confused, and I, I was like, when does this take place? Because all of their references <laughs> yeah. for actors and actresses are like mid-80s. Yes. It's very odd. This book was published in 1989. Okay. Whoa. So I guess, I guess Daryl Hannah as a reference point. Could hit a little bit more. Was Splash yeah. was the eighties, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, ten, yeah. sure. Oh yeah, ten. All the all the all the regular re- Fear Street readers <laughs> love Ted. Blade Runner was out. Yep, clearly uh, inspired by that. Speaking of turning yourself into a cyborg to make Paul feel better. Mm-hmm, um, thank you. We do know who, who R.L. Stein had a crush on, at least Daryl <laughs> Hannah. Thanks to this book and Molly Ringwald. I'm actually okay with more reference points of it's just that celebrity, okay? As opposed to <laughs> I had brown hair and i wore blue jean overalls and i like to chew gum <laughs> don't worry chad he gives us plenty of outfits in this yeah. book he's, yeah he's or, does. i was gonna say or the main description of meg which is that she looks like a child <laughs> she has <laughs> a child face <laughs> short and smooth person is what is what i pictured with her incredibly smooth smooth, smooth. very smooth <laughs> Recently scrubbed, she's so smooth. Meg is perhaps like one of the messiest R.L. Stein protagonists ever, and I kind of love her for that. She, I, in my mind, she was Rachel Dratch throughout this entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> she ignores all warning yes. signs that multiple people are trying to kill her because yeah. she is procrastinating on a psych paper. <laughs> Meg is so bad at plan at, at paying attention to any signs of anything going on around her because she <laughs> throws a party for a girl whose boyfriend was killed with all of the memory in the place where her boy- her boyfriend was killed with all of the people involved in the killed uh, person's life. Oh my god, the process the way that the house and the party is in is next door like- to where he was killed. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's a bad idea. No, it's chill. <laughs> it's, <hella laughs> chill. it's a good party. No, we're doing it. First idea, best idea. We said we'd do it. We're doing it. <laughs> um, book starts with a bang, at least. Yeah. 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 Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. We get a, a another mystery murderer, uh, uh, their, uh, their perspective as they do a murder and uh, <laughs> shoot somebody with a rifle and talking about how easy it was, yeah. which is... Very strange. It is strange, and and we Kyle, we just started really getting into Fear Street. We've read a couple before, but mm-hmm. we're we're starting from the beginning again. And so this is the second Fear Street book, and both of them so far have opened with the prologue of the kill happening, which I guess is like a good crime procedural. Yeah, a bit. Kyle, you no, have some that experience makes sense. With that. Yeah, I 
I was shocked at. I mean, I guess I, I read Fear Streets growing up, but I don't remember them. I don't remember as many uh, teen deaths or alcoholic dads <laughs> yeah. or uh, relationships going on. There's some heavy stuff, and there's like sex talk in this, like almost yeah. explicit sex talk. Almost I, explicit. They almost acknowledge that they have sex. What is the sex talk? They're they're kids like doing doing makeouts to each other at the party, and there's oh, reference yeah, to sure, sure. Oh, there's, there's the shirt stuff. There's talk yeah. of dancing horizontally with each other. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, Dwayne is Dwayne is well, Dwayne, Dwayne is a bunch of wee woos. I'll tell you that. Dwayne, I don't understand his deal at all. <laughs> he. <laughs> <laughs> was he was a self hating nerd because he played the the Dungeons and Dragons game and yet con- called everybody else a nerd himself. Wizards and Dungeons. I, I honestly Wizards yeah, and Dungeons. Wizards and Dungeons. But also he reads or him or Brian reads Dungeon Magazine. Uh, I think they call they called it Dragon Magazine. I believe. Yes. And oh, yes. They call it, which which is, was the actual which magazine, is the right? actual magazine. I like that he went through all the trouble of avoid using avoiding using Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> and then accidentally <laughs> referenced a real thing. I really? I think this yeah. is interesting that it's coming out in 1989 and it has a lot of the Dungeons and Dragons stuff in it. Um because this is right in the middle of the Satanic Panic. Like this yeah. is right in the middle of yep. you know uh D&D is going to turn your kid into a satanist. It's going to make them kill their friends. Like that and like magic cards and fantasy and anything yeah. fun, mm-hmm. metal music. <laughs> yeah. like, uh-huh. I mean, if there's definitely a moment where Meg's dad kind of leans into that and he's like, you ain't playing that shit. You ain't. Also, I think that this book would have been infinitely more interesting if it was just about that. I, yes. I thought that's where this was going about halfway through. Too. I was getting very excited. I was like, wait, is the surprise party about a party of adventurers? Oh, that would have I... been fa- Oh, if it was a surprise Wizards and Dungeons game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it kind of was. <laughs> I love <laughs> Yeah. I love Brian, the the benign uh, Wizards and Dungeons player, the wizard, yeah. if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think it, I, I thought for sure, I thought for sure they were going to make him the killer. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, Brian, Brian doesn't have a grasp on reality, right? Well, no, but that was also my question is I, I don't think Wizards and Dungeons is tabletop. I think it's more of a LARPing thing, is what it feels like. <laughs> right, because they do go to the woods and to a cave to play it constantly. But we yeah. never get to go to the we cave. We didn't go to the cave. I know, I was so excited. I, I never see uh, it played. I think it's because I, RL had no idea what Dungeons & Dragons was. <laughs> and absolutely. did not bother to do any research for it. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably for the best. We've seen what happens when he tries to make up like a Magic the Gathering or a Dungeons and Dragons and Goosebumps. Oh yeah, it's it. it's broken as hell and, and not in any way game tested. Does does not stand up to scrutiny. There's no play testing happening. So so Brian is uh, I guess in this friend he's not even in the friend circle. He's just a kid at school they know. He's Meg's Who, cousin. Do you guys want me to run down like the the major players? There are so many kids. Yeah. Please Kevin, if you could do it. All right. So, uh, in order of appearance, we have Meg, our our protagonist. We Rachel have Dredd. Shannon, who is Meg's friend. Uh, we'll say best active yeah. friend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Shannon looks like Molly Ringwald. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shannon. No, Shannon. Or Shannon's Daryl Hannah, I believe. No, wait. I'm no, sorry. No, Ellen's, no, Ellen's, Ellen's Molly Daryl. Ringwald. I apologize. <laughs> No, Paul Shannon. There, there right. are so many teenagers in this. I had a hard. <laughs> I time know, and they keep adding them. Yeah. As the, oh, keep... I made a web <laughs> of <laughs> character <laughs> relationships. <laughs> it sucks. I had to do. It. <laughs> uh, Shannon is related to Evan. Uh, Sh- uh, Evan is Shannon's brother. Uh, Evan got shot in the opening chapter. Okay. Mm-hmm. Everything that happens is going to revolve around Evan in some way or another. Center of the web. If I, if I can add in your web, despite us having a cold open where we see a man get shot willingly. Uh, Will, what? There, <laughs> willingly? Well, I don't know. <laughs> willingly. Willingly. I mean, someone chooses to shoot shoot a man that we're presuming to be Evan, right? It's it's written from the shooter's perspective. Sure. Yes. Yes. And and. Chad, that you actually, it's funny that you said that because it is very important that we say that they willingly shot somebody. That is a very good point. They willingly shot someone. That's yeah, true. Yeah, that's a big uh, point. That's a big plot point. But despite that cold open, we are then told about, oh, yeah, well, Evan died in 
the woods. They, they think it's a suicide. They say later. They, oh, I thought they. Everyone I think assumes it's a suicide. As a hunting accident, like a, like a he fell on like his an gun. Accident. Yeah, was what they said later on. I think that was the thought, which is crazy. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to look into that anymore. Suicide. It wasn't a suicide. Yeah, it like wasn't Ellen, a kill. Ellen, his boyfriend, his girlfriend went out after him because he was like, "I'm going into Fear Street Woods. I better bring my gun." Because it's Fear Street Woods, and then mm. found him tripped over a vine with the gunshot, implying that I guess he like fell on his gun. Right. We're we are not even an, an inch into the character web. <laughs> Sorry, yes, okay. Just, just want to clarify. Just want to clarify. <laughs> Meg is dating Tony. Tony is poor and is a dad <laughs> as an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Therefore, Tony is bad. <laughs> <laughs> is what RL is trying to say. Tony is disadvantaged, therefore he's the worst person in the entire world. <laughs> I mean, he could be a little bit more chipper, couldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna pull himself up from his bootstraps. He's gotta be yeah. a little yeah, a little more cheery. I felt so betrayed by Tony, and we'll get into why later, but I was really pulling for I him. I hated Tony out the gate. I fell for RL's trick. I immediately hate, I was like, this kid's a little bitch. And then even as they started to reveal his tragic backstory, I was still like, Tony's still kind of a bitch, isn't he? I mean, <laughs> he is, to- he is his, his toxic anger was automatically yes. a red flag for me. Tony is best friends with Evan, who is dead. So Tony has yes. no friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is maybe why he's such an asshole. Maybe. Is Tony the one that has the pool cue fight? Yeah. Yes. Uh, which wh- I think is like, Maybe the best scene in this whole book. When Tony gets beat the fuck up. He gets bean. He gets bean yeah. real hard. Shannon is somehow involved with Dwayne, who is the worst person in the entire world. Yeah. 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 It's implied in the opening conversation that they are doing some version of dating, but really Dwayne is a sex pest and we all hate him. Yeah. He's the worst. Yeah. Uh Dwayne plays uh wizards and dungeons with brian who is meg's cousin brian is also the one who found evan quotes in the woods when he was Mm -hmm. uh accidentally shot by no one (laughs) amazing ellen is meg's best friend ellen is evan's girlfriend -girlfriend. ex-girlfriend yeah yeah yeah, the late evan's girlfriend yes uh ellen but, uh, basically, she's out of the picture. She is the friend that they are going to surprise at the party, but she's not really around this. She's the one who looks like whatever the fuck. Daryl Hannah. Daryl Hannah. Yeah. yeah. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> those, na- those names. Like those names are similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exact same. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Look the same. Wait, same person. Think, same time. Daryl Hannah is a guy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a basketball I'm not going to Google. I'm not going to look at, just because RL chose to put in a dated reference, I'm going to go the extra mile. Ellen, Ellen is a 6-7 point guard. <laughs> uh, and then there's uh, Lisa and Corey, who are in sort of a Sundari kind of relationship, and they don't really have much impact. Our former protagonist from book one, Corey. Oh! Uh, are yep. they okay? Uh-huh. That's exciting. Oh, I didn't I was realize. wondering. It seemed pointless that they were in this. Yeah, they're Corey is the is the star of book one, and Lisa is his best friend. And at the end of the book, it's implied that they date, and then we see that that didn't go well for them uh, yeah. in this book. Oh, that's that relationship. Oh my god! Do you guys not remember the scene in the party in this book where he does a handstand? His one trait. <laughs> I do remember oh there were multiple god. people doing, it. and we saw like Arnie or whatever another. Uh, Yep. Other dudes from the gymnastic yeah, so, uh, club. Uh, uh, Kyle, just so you know, Corey is basically Spider-Man in the first book. Amazing. And Lisa was like the, the nerdy girl that had feelings for him. Yeah. Great. Well, she was kind of goth nerdy. She was more on the goth. Band. Yeah. Yeah. Why did they break up? I was really rooting for them. They didn't. They're still dating. The they co- didn't. They're not well, happy. Well, they went bad. They're not, they well, they're well. not happy. I mean, they're still dating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're making each other miserable, but they haven't broken up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Lisa's just turned over a Sundary <laughs> kind of leaf where, like, she's always complaining about uh, Corey when he's not there. But then, like, when he shows up, she's like, I love you. It's you know? toxic. What? No, it's just. <laughs> I'll ju- I'm will i going to jump in and say, listen, you listener, I'm going to block both of you guys from talking. I'm going to say, listen, you might be like, I want a Sundary girlfriend. No, you don't. 
<laughs> no, you don't. You think it's all fun and games. You don't want to have a long term loving relationship with a Sundari girlfriend. They're going to they're going to treat you like garbage. It's going to hurt don't you. Do it. It's going to counterpoint. Hurt. You do because uh, <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> here's the thing. The important part of the sun dairy is the dairy. Sun means to move away. Dairy means to come closer. The dairy is the important <laughs> part here. Okay. You don't want someone who's too dairy dairy, if you get my meaning. I think we need uh, Chris Farley Explains Anime, the podcast, <laughs> as performed by <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> that was cool. We get each other. Uh, now, um, you, listen to, you listen to a ton of characters. Are you going to get into Mike? Oh man! D- Did yeah, you, Mike. Don't we, forget about Mike. We learn about later. Mike who is. Who the fuck is Mike? Mike is Shannon's half brother who looks oh. exactly like Evan. <laughs> yes, and Jesus it's Christ. really funny that he exists because he is part of the best scene in uh, anything in fiction. This book sucks until the last ten <laughs> percent, in which part it becomes awesome. Yeah, this book is f- this book is fine. Like. I'm not going to say this book sucks. Well, and, it, and that's it, what I mean. I, I, neutral experiences are the worst, Kevin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this book is fine for 90% of it, and then the end of it is actually kind of interesting. I'm proud of RL for speaking in complete sentences <laughs> and, like, yeah. m- you know, m- using a, a, a metaphor or a simile or describing uh, an environment here and there. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I'm happy yeah. to see all that because uh, you don't get that in Goosebumps. <laughs> He actually builds tension a couple times, right? Like, like yeah. doing things from the killer's perspective, and then you know when you do the Tony flip and the fact that we know, and Meg's an idiot and somehow doesn't know. Like he's really doing some Alfred Hitchcock shit. You You're know? gonna have to explain what the Tony flip is. We can hold off in a second if we want to. I wasn't sure. The, if... the Tony flip is when we suddenly uh, switch perspectives to Tony uh from meg but also tony is at that point i think planning on killing meg yes Mm -hmm. yeah it's like meg is walking home from home and she's like oh boy oh boy is this surprise party gonna happen or what no one wants me to have the surprise party and then like cut to tony he's like i'm gonna throw her off a cliff maybe has a split personality i know (laughs) something broke in tony for sure yeah he's um he's not doing great the general like plot thrust now that we know all the characters now that we have an iron grip on every single one of these characters <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and the many personality traits listener i hope you've created your character web at home yes Take, well, i'm not going to show you podcast mine. for a second to make sure that your web is complete <laughs> send in your webs to uh, uh <laughs> we'll grade them for you send in um, your webs to goosebuds at gmail.com and we'll tell you, you we did a good job <laughs> uh all right, so Meg, Shannon, and Tony are riding bikes when Shannon's like, guess who's coming back to town? Ellen. Meg's like, no way. We got to throw her a surprise party. Shannon's like, that's a bad idea. Tony's like, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Meg's like, great. We're all, we're all agreed. We're doing it. <laughs> we're throwing the surprise party. Meg proceeds to get th- threats. Now we are in the meat of the story. <laughs> The the vast majority of the story. Yes. Yeah. And I yeah. at the beginning of these threats, there's a great moment where she's thinking about horror movies. And I just had to write this quote down. Uh, RL on horror movies. How dumb. Girls in those films were either traitors or frightened idiots. What the <laughs> fuck does he mean by <laughs> traitors? Traitors. <laughs> traitors. What does traitors mean? <laughs> I could not. I don't know. I could not parse his meaning for traitors. <laughs> no idea. Like gender traitors. Maybe he was just kind of, you know, expressing something for himself. He does hate women, right? RL, <laughs> just in general. <laughs> maybe it's like a pure. Yeah, maybe it's like a puritanical thing. Like, oh, these girls, they're traitors. They should keep themselves chaste and pure, but they're drinking at a party and doing horizontal things. <laughs> sure, <laughs> horizontal dancing. <laughs> maybe RL was going through a divorce. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We, don't know. we could look it up, but we're not going to do that. Yeah. So he talk. He calls all women traitors, uh, and then uh, and then we get into the meat of of what's going on, which is really most of the beginning of this is uh, Meg receiving a threat. Tony yeah. talking to Tony immediately after, in which Tony says, "Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, the same threat happened to me. We should stop the party." And then she yeah. ignores him. There's even a scene where they both get like a note that uh, that's written in red crayon, really classic, yes. and it says, "Don't do the party, or I will fucking kill you." A friend. Yeah. 
And <laughs> yeah. Meg's like, hey, Tony, did you get this wacky note? And Tony immediately takes the note and crumples it up. Tony immediately destroys evidence. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. all right, Tony, you're, that's a flag. <laughs> yeah. That's a technical foul. Don't destroy evidence. Can I ask the room who, who all clocked Tony right away? How how were we feeling oh, about Tony? I did not clock Tony. I was fighting for Tony because he was uh, right. Like Meg should just kind of back off. <laughs> the surprise party isn't a good idea. Mm -hmm. But until Tony got like really weird about not having the surprise yeah. party, I was kind of with him. I was like, yeah, that's not worth getting threats. I wrote a prediction at okay. the beginning mm -hmm. of my notes after the initial things, and I was so close. It was. <laughs> Tony killed Evan because he was in love with Shannon, his mm. sister. Oh. Yeah. So oh. bit off. Off. I mean, we're all, I was wrong in multiple ways, but you know, I, it was immediately, I was like, oh yeah, Tony, look at this fuck. Well, well, Kyle, I think you sniffed it out. It just was that the ending was so bonkers. There was no way to possibly <laughs> yes. guess it. No, not at all. I thought Dwayne being horrible was just to throw us off the scent of things. Yeah. Like I, I was like, it couldn't possibly be Dwayne. And I thought it was going to be Brian because I didn't trust RL to not throw a quiet nerd under the bus. Yeah, nerd. Yeah, no, I, I, was, I was really coming for about halfway through this book. I was so stoked. So I'm like, we're going to go towards some sort of cursed D and D game. This sounds awesome. <laughs> so cool. It's going to be Brian yeah. and some sort of like, and Ellen was part of the group and we didn't know. And, but Early on, I think it's Meg who very nerdishly is is writing the full bullet journals down of like things to buy for party suspects for who could send me things like, and like reasons <laughs> yeah. why they yeah. like pretty good motivations. She's actively like thinking through what would these people have. The only problem is she pretty like she is thinking about that kind of stuff, but she really uh, backgrounds it to her party planning. Her party planning yeah. is yes, it takes extreme priority even though literally every person around her is telling her to stop planning this party. <laughs> and also she should be working on her psych paper. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> Did she ever finish it? She, she said it was like two weeks late at some yeah. point. I don't know if she ever finished it. We never get that resolution. <laughs> Guys, Ellen's coming back to town after months of mourning her dead boyfriend. We need to yeah. surprise her. They're going to like a party every other night. <laughs> yeah, there are multiple parties. I will say though, when when Meg is making her like detective inventory in her journal, mm -hmm. yeah, and she goes through like I think she says Tony as multiple reasons why Tony would not be a suspect early on. I really like that, and then she gets to yeah. like Dwayne. And she's like Dwayne, I hate Dwayne, and then the bell <laughs> rang, and like and I was like, that's it, Dwayne's the killer. Wow, because, interesting. Because she didn't because she didn't list out any clues for him. I. I what I liked was when she was listing it out. I was like, "Oh, Meg is being pretty clever." Mm -hmm. And then the issue with her with her investigation is when she confronts someone and they say no. She's just like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to imply." Yeah, when she confronted Shannon, it was really sussy on Shannon's part to react Absolutely. like that. Like, your brother's dead. We get it. A like, kid died in the woods, and a sad girl's coming back. That's all you really need to know. Yeah. So it ca it carries on. She she's uh she, it, it certainly does. It just carries on. <laughs> she just keeps going. She goes to lunch and she has a bad lunch and she but she always brings a lunch. She's always prepared. That uh, didn't make any sense. It was wild. It was so wild because then she opens up her lunch and it's filled with blood and she just kind of doesn't do anything about that. She's like, "Well, that was weird." And then moves on to reminiscing about the pool cue fight. But it was red paint. <laughs> But also yeah. no no curious like oh is there red paint? I no think that pays off anywhere. No reaction. Yeah. She talks to Shannon after and does not mention the red paint lunch bag. There is actually one cool thing that happens here. Oh yeah, what's that? So she has a little talk with uh, Lisa before she goes over to talk to Shannon. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Lisa's living room is described as like cozy and stuff, and it's like very similar, like. I think RL actually looked back at the first book to describe the exact Lisa's exact like living room from the first book. Cause like, I, I also remember the squishy couch and the chairs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But, but it's like, you know, Lisa's very warm and like her living room is very cozy. And then we have a conversation with Shannon uh, and Shannon's in like this kind of like uptight stuffy yeah. upper class house. And Shannon Kind of sucks to talk to. I know her brother's dead, but still. I like it when RL does a literature like that. It was one literature. What what rich storytelling and world building he's doing here for Fear Street. <laughs> Some girls have soft couches. 
Some don't. Some are traitors. Some are not. <laughs> Most are, though. <laughs> can we can we de- just detail? Because so much of this book is random threats. Uh, yeah. Just trying to remember all of them that happen. It doesn't even have to be in order. Uh, gets a phone call at night. Mm-hmm. Yes. Classic, uh, classic a breathing threat. voice that says, "Don't throw the party, or you're like dead meat." Uh, I do think there. I think there's a funny meta joke within that one because she does bring that one up to Lisa, and she's like, "Was it a breathing one?" And he's, she's like, "Nah, it was a whispering one." She's like, "I've only gotten breathing ones," and that was what happened in the first book, where she got a breathing into the phone threat. Like the oh, continuity is great. Yeah. Oh yeah, and in Fear Street in Shady Shadyville, right? Mm-hmm. Shady, Shady, Shady side. side, Shady Side. Yeah. It is a constant. Every woman is threatened in Shady Side all the time. And also the phone is magic. <laughs> what do you, what do you please, please elaborate, Kevin? Everything everything starts with the phone. The phone is always the introduction to the, oh, I see. the bad things it's the th- happening. It's the threshold cross- crossing is what you're saying. I, I got to say, rereading this did make me kind of miss for it. Technology's great. Love having a yeah. smartphone everything. Eh, There's something pass. I kind of miss about... I'm going to pick up this like very detailless plastic can <laughs> and I can punch in some numbers and then someone's going to hear my voice and they're not going to know who it is. Like there's something yeah, kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Not that I'd ever start like calling nope. and harassing people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You're but just that's kind of what you were describing. <laughs> yeah. You're just saying you can't jerky boys it anymore. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The art, the art of a prank call is gone. Yeah. What, one point, I, I just to share an anecdote. One point in high school, I got one of these calls. Is in my in my Jeep Grand Cherokee with my buddies, and we all simultaneously got breathy calls on our cell phones one at a time, and they wouldn't tell us who it was. Uh-huh. I still think about it. I'm still haunted by who was that on the phone who called was it Tony? us. It was it was Tony? <laughs> but I'll never know, and that left an impact. In my soul. That's a beautiful mystery that probably run thro- runs throughout your art, Chad. Yeah. 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 Who's the call? Cool. So one time, Evan <laughs> hit Tony really hard with a pool cue and wouldn't stop until he started bleeding. And then everyone <laughs> yelled at him. I was just going to say that I actually really like this scene because it was yeah. one of those things. It was very vivid and it definitely makes it clear that Evan was super fucked up. Yeah. And like when he accidentally hits Ellen with the pool cue and then she, he really hurts Tony. I, I don't know. I, it, I The description of Tony not realizing he's in a real fight with Evan. I was like, <laughs> that's 100 percent a situation I was in as like a teen yep. and a kid. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's sort of like disassociated with reality a little bit in this moment, which yeah. was re- which is like we don't know anything about this character other than these couple stories w- we're told. But. There mm-hmm. were, he was certainly not a, uh, he was not a 100% a good person. And everyone around him no. kind of, kind of thought that. It's strange that Tony is the innocent one in this fight. Cause I, I agree, Kyle, I really like the scene of, it's a misunderstanding of Tony thinks that it's just like a fun, we're, we're just fucking around with, yeah. with pool cues. And Evan's like, I will fucking kill you. <laughs> uh, it's almost weird that it's not Tony in the other way because well, we will. But, said Tony is... but Tony has been acting strange ever since Evan passed away, and we have a very good reason for that. Hmm. Okay. And he right. may or may not have a split personality. No mm-hmm. one knows. Yeah, Tony's got like a two-faced thing going on. We also learn a little bit more about uh, Tony's dad. Uh, yes. And to- Tony's... But this is how good the economy was in 89, right? So <laughs> Let's hear it. Tony's dad isn't just like buying Evan Williams from the packy or anything like that. He's <laughs> he's going down to the low. He's walking in his walkable yeah. city from yeah. his house that he owns <laughs> 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 to a bar, an establishment, a yeah. a public house to order his drinks one by one. And that's yeah. how he gets drunk. The disposable income <laughs> that would require these days yeah. is immense. <laughs> You could be a respectable drunk back then. Yeah. 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 You could do it not in front of your family. That's how cheap drinks were and how good the economy was. <laughs> <laughs> the cops would drive you around to any problems that were happening in your life, too, while you were drunk. Yeah. A beautiful time. I wonder why Tony's dad drinks, but that's not really in the purview. We are not to question. We are not to question that. Well, because he's because Tony sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, well, we, my kid sucks so much. What we're not told <laughs> is that Tony that Tony's that Tony's dad's drinking began 
when Evan died as well. You're right. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. God damn. I, the funny thing about you, you brought up a good point in terms of this walkable town. I cannot get a handle on what Shady Side is like. I have yeah, no idea. It, it, it's described, everyone has like either a normal house or like yeah. a palatial, like multi floor finished basement McMansion. Yeah, who has, yeah. somebody has like a southern, pla- I think Shannon has a southern plantation yeah. house. Brian, Brian lives in a southern plantation. Oh, Brian does. I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And Tony and his dad live in a row house. Like, so like there, I think there are different parts of town like maybe they live closer to like the town center where it's more urbanized or something and like probably that. closer to yeah. fear street because we are given a little bit of the topography not really like a clear topography in the first book but we are yeah. told there is a poorer part of shady side which is closer to fear street which is the, okay. the worst part of town and then there is a nice side of shady side okay i don't know if like sunnyvale is a thing or whatever not sunnyvale that's um that's community right no, no that's, that's buffy uh, that's, that's buffy, buffy. yeah oh. yeah there's a there's like a sunny side or whatever in the Fear Street movies. Yeah, there, yeah, that's the uh, Eagleton to the Pawnee. So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. I see. I do love that there's a literal Fear Street and that's where all the scary shit is. It's fantastic. <laughs> Great hook for me. <laughs> the only problem is in these first couple books, there ain't no ghosts. It's just people with guns. Yeah. <laughs> that's too real. I don't like that real horror. He had to change it up, man. Well, we have a wizard. Yeah, we, and he does do some wizardry. He does some. He does a, a bit of a cantrip at the end of this. <laughs> a minor, a minor illusion. <laughs> we should, yeah, we should start making our way through because not too much happens other than that, right? So, like, uh, the biggest in- incident that happens in this book is uh, most of the way through, as Meg is making her um, somewhat investigation, but mostly party planning, is <laughs> she starts talking. And she isn't talking to Brian yet, but she she uh, finds out that Tony and Brian have gone off to play uh, Wizards and Dungeons in the cave yes. that Brian likes to play Wizards oh. and Dungeons in. And Brian Brian talks like the way Tom Hanks talks in Monsters and Mazes. I've never like seen complete, it, so you're gonna have to explain this to me. Which is a, a, another movie about the uh, vilification of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I just like mm-hmm. you'll lose you'll lose your grip on reality. In, in Monsters of Bases at the end point, Tom Hanks is like believes in the in the story so much he's gonna jump off a building until his friends save right, him. Right. Brian calls he's himself yeah. a level three wizard in real life. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, so so I thought that was like maybe a bit, or like, no, Brian is actually tapping into <laughs> demonic powers. And he's like, if I he's not, he's not. He just is a sad kid. We wish. But <laughs> we wish. But he he's like, Yeah, when I become a level four wizard, all will be revealed. Right. He's committed to the bit. He, I think that's what is really happening yeah. here. I think that's how he protects himself from Dwayne and Tony, is he pretends to be crazy. To so keep, that keeps him at a distance. Yeah, because he he collaborates with Shannon later and plans like a, 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 a prank, essentially. So he is all there. I think he's just protecting himself by acting insane so that nobody fucks him up. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> More than they already have. <laughs> which which it, it fails him here in this scene. Yeah, we're into woods. Um uh Meg gets a call from Tony's drunk dad. He's like, Where's my son? It's four AM and she's like, I don't know, they're in the woods. So Meg gets her dad, who's who does like a responsible dad thing and goes to the woods with uh his daughter, but does an irresponsible yeah. dad thing and immediately gets separated from his daughter in the, in the woods. Don't know how that happened. As I was reading it, I was like, how did this happen? I was thinking the same thing. It was so fast. She saw a raccoon and she chased it, and her dad just let her do that. Yeah. I mean, he was so sleepy. He was sleepy. He was sleepy. <laughs> he was so sleepy. And you know what? Maybe he just trusts his daughter a little bit. Yeah, he saw a hollow tree, and he's like, I can take a quick <laughs> nap in here. I mean, so, <laughs> Scoot on over, he, Al. He did almost let her just go. Like, there was a second where he was like, eh, <laughs> fuck, I guess I'll go. Fucking whatever. He's like, I could call out her name. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm, if she's calling my name, I'm not going to answer. Hell no. When Skablamo, uh, a <laughs> follower, appears behind... Uh, Meg and breathes onion and French fry breath into her nose. Which is never explained about the onion never and French Never again! I thought that was going to be like the big tell. Me too. Makes it makes it a, in, a, in another scene later and suddenly she's like, I smell onions. Oh no. Yeah. Where was the onion breath come back? I just, oh, I'm so annoyed by that. Or she looks under the seat of Tony's car and he's got onion and French fry vodka underneath there or something. <laughs> 
a bag of bu- a bag of burger and onion chips. I, yeah, I was definitely waiting for it to be like a thing where you find out one of them works at Dairy Queen or something. Yeah, right, like right. That. That's like an Encyclopedia Brown thing. Like uh-huh. Encyclopedia Brown, that would be a big fucking deal. With this, it's just kind of creepy. Encyclopedia Brown, Megan. <laughs> no. No, uh, she's an idiot and a traitor. I think every <laughs> I, a very big tra- <laughs> What does that line mean? Everyone in this book is an idiot and a traitor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. RL's nihilism is coming out again where this is not a universe full of people who deserve to live <laughs> and speaking of not deserving to live uh, the the <laughs> onion onion breath uh, shadowy figure tells Meg not to have the party one more time and then shoves her into a ravine where she lands upon her cousin Brian who has been beaten up very badly and Tony comes yeah. running down and uh, get, and gets and grabs her and tells her that asks her what happened and then runs off to get the police, and then everybody is taken home, and Brian is bandaged up like a mummy. And Meg goes, I love that he's worried about me. <laughs> I know! <laughs> oh, he's, so, he's so worried about me. Meg is very into what Tony is throwing down in this entire book. Well, is she into him, or is she just, like, so starved for someone to even ask her how she is? She's got self-esteem issues, for sure. Yeah. And I think she's a little into uh, Tony's damage. Makes her life interesting. Yeah, she's yeah. like, that's kind of, that's a little spice, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Why is he so bad? There's something There's something so tragic about, if we're, if we're, if we're jumping ahead, but just the part of where we are now in Tony's POV, and Tony's like, I think I gotta kill Meg. And meanwhile... <laughs> Vegas is just like, oh, what's going on? That that big brain of his, he's so cool. And people just like push her, push her off a cliff. We're like, that is actually kind of terrifying. Yeah. It's, yeah, no. It's pretty realistic to, to life where you're like, oh, you could be thinking about anything. And that other person's over there being like, all right, I could take her to... To Lover's Leap, and I could make her leap. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get to let's get to Lover's Leap. So we go to uh, Brian's plantation, and we see Brian <laughs> and Corey and David are leaving. Uh, from the last book, are leaving as Meg shows up, and Meg goes, "How's Brian?" And as they're like running away from the building, they go, "Not good." <laughs> <laughs> Meg ends up talking to Brian uh, and he ends up babbling on about uh, the wizard knowing tricks that warriors do not know he's of. firmly yeah. RPing during this he does not break character yeah and he says something along the lines of I did it with no with no real context surrounding what that means for Meg mm-hmm. and then she pretty leaves pretty much instantly and is like He's been the one who's been threatening me, I think. I got to talk to Tony about this. Mm -hmm. So she calls Tony and Tony is like, what did he say to you? And he's acting incredibly (laughs) suspicious. No chill whatsoever. No chill. And she's like, I know, I know, I I know. Meg knows. I'm Meg and I know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the, the, the farce. The sad farce, not the farce. The, it is a tragedy. farce. It is. It is a yeah. farce. Like yeah. it is yeah. just. A, it's a. It's a comedy of errors at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and Tony's like, "Great. Well, now that you know, I have to kill you. I mean, let's go make out at the party. I mean, let's make out at a place that's far away from the party that has a precipitous drop <laughs> and a really slippery edge." Yeah. She's like, she's like, "Isn't that lovers leap?" He's like, "Don't worry, I'll take care of you. Come on, <laughs> come on, young teenagers. Understand double entendre, Meg." <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I love that he's taking care of me. <laughs> <laughs> Not much else happens at this point. I think it's pretty much oh, there are multiple scenes with Ellen, Shannon, and Meg hanging out, talking about each other's clothes and how they great, great they look. Uh, they set yeah. up the surprise party. Um, well, can, can I say yeah? Uh, well, I you up. I think way too late in the book, finally they invite Ellen to the surprise party, which just feels like you got to get her schedule saved. You're doing yeah. all of this. You don't know. Maybe Ellen has something that night. And then you're all out of luck. She's only in town for a month. <laughs> yeah. You, just just yeah. like ahead of time, be like, hey, Ellen, save Saturday night. I want to take you to something. Don't worry about it. But instead, it just you got you to gotta do your invita- invitation first. That's all I'm saying. I agree, Chad. So but before we get to the surprise party, we got to go to David's party. Oh, my God. I forgot oh, about God, David's yeah. party. David's party. Oh, so this is. We, this is where the kids are making out everywhere. Basketballs are yeah. flying at people's heads. <laughs> yep. Cor- uh, Corey does a handstand and all his chain falls out of his pockets. Kids are wilding. Except for Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne is acting bad at this party. Dwayne sucks. Dwayne's a sex pest and he's bad. And he's bothering Shannon. Mm-hmm. Shannon does not. Shannon's like, you know, 
do, doing her best. And Meg, is, Meg does a good friend thing. Yeah, and, and Shannon just it dismisses it and is like, I can handle myself when clearly she could not. Like, Shannon, all due respect, you can handle that, but you can't handle me asking you a few questions about <laughs> yeah. my thing that's happening. Yeah. It's like, why does that not set you off into a blind rage? Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe you got angry at me because it's safe. That doesn't make oh, me feel man. good, Shannon. Damn. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Just some thoughts for Shannon. I like this is gonna be a good insight into Kevin's psyche on this episode. <laughs> yeah. I know everything about people, especially fictional teenagers. <laughs> especially fictional teenagers. What else happens at the party? I can't quite remember. Dwayne's a super creep. Right? Yeah, Dwayne's mm-hmm. a super creep. Um, even though he has beautiful muscles mm-hmm. uh and, and gross shirts. I was mm-hmm. picturing Pit Stain from Pete and Pete. Yeah, it was pretty time. nasty. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I that's could, good. Well, I, I was so thrown because I, I read him as like a big muscular Biff Tannen. Yeah. But then he also plays Wizards and Dragons. So I was like, or Wizards and Dungeons. He so looks you're really always thinking by. of Biff Tannen. He's a great archetype. I think, I in my mind, he looked like Rocky and Rocky won after he runs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stains, egg running down the front of his his gray yeah. sweatshirt. Bit of a know? pump on. Yeah, the guy yeah. He's, he's pumped. He's looking good, yeah. but but the clothes yeah. are not working. But that yeah. guy playing tabletop with a kid who refers to himself as a wizard in real life, like I would. Yeah. I want to watch that. I'll watch that entire. Let's play. Th- that's not what they're doing. Dwayne is just. Yeah. Dwayne is probably just beating the shit out. Of <laughs> you of Brian. Wait, you don't think they're playing? You don't think they're rolling dice? No. Dwayne doesn't do, <laughs> yeah. Dwayne does not uh, do short math and keep like character continuity. In this is head. why I think it's LARPing. I think they're just, I think they're just in the woods running around, throwing uh-huh. sandbags at each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then there's some physical activity for Dwayne. That makes sense. Yeah. Dwayne, Dwayne is not a gamer. He violates the gamer code. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say there's, I, not to step back before this, but there was a really, really weird scene where Tony is walking back oh, yeah. to his house in the rain mm-hmm. and just comes across Dwayne shooting baskets in, yeah. in the rain. Yeah. And, and they have this really weird heated exchange between them that I didn't quite understand. It makes no sense. Tony comes up to him and steals the ball from him and they start like riffing with each other, like kind of making fun of yeah. each other. And you're like, oh, they're friends. And then mm-hmm. Dwayne just starts calling him a dweeb and like attacking yeah. him, and t- and Tony runs off in fear. It's a weird, well, weird scene. Well, Tony runs off because Dwayne says that he's glad that Evan's dead because it oh, means that's he right. can go after his sister. Yeah, and yeah, really hurt his feelings. That's right. He tries yeah. to Houdini yeah. him with the basketball too. Couldn't you see yeah. this yeah. so much though? Like I know, I know this makes no sense, but if you told me this was shot like One Tree Hill, <laughs> and it was just <laughs> a these perfect two, scene, these two mus- <laughs> these two muscular guys just playing yeah. basketball at night, a soft and, like, focus. <laughs> yeah, the basketball being a metaphor for their dynamic as they as they bounce back and forth. Oh man, Tony is never physically described, unlike everybody yeah. else. Yeah, well, that scene, I was like, it seems like Tony's also a kind of a jock, but yeah, yeah. and strong because he yeah, hurt I mean, Tony as like Hammerhead from Spider Man. Okay, just just I'm gonna Google just that. big big muscular mobster dude. <laughs> like I don't know what how I saw him with a flat head. <laughs> yeah, with a flat head and just head butting things. That's how he hurts people. That's how I saw him. Well, okay. Tony, we know that Tony has a, a a lovely leather jacket that he will not lend to his girlfriend yeah. that he's trying to kill. Which, uh, Chad, I think makes him more of a tombstone. If we're staying in <laughs> Spider-Man villains, I like tombstone. Yeah, more mo- Yeah, more up to date yeah. Spider-Man. I like that. Yeah, he is described as pale. Once again, tombstone. Tombstone, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Tony takes Meg away from David's party that they really just did one kind of loop at. And <laughs> they go to uh, Lover's Leap. And uh, Meg's like, ooh, I'm a little cold. Can I borrow your jacket? And Tony's like, Haha, no, I don't want to lose this jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then he pries it from her, what Brian told her. Uh, she tells yeah. him that Brian basically told her nothing. And he's like, oh, yeah, she doesn't know that I, that I killed my best friend. Yeah. I should kill her. Mm, nah, I'm not going to kill her. Actually, no. If I kill her, then uh, Brian and Ellen will be scared. It would be good to kill again. I should kill again. Also, yeah. dude, everyone just saw you leave the David's party with your girlfriend. Like, 
that's you know you're not covering your tracks real good there he's not a good he's not well he's not a good murderer for a very good reason which we find out later what would his cover story be that they were just banging it out near the edge and they (laughs) slipped on a rock (laughs) fell Yeah, we tried to do a, a special move over the uh, incline. We were trying to do standing 69, and then she slipped. And I'm... <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, all the more reason to get... Wouldn't it be better to give her your jacket, unless you're going to try to... Re- There's no way Tony does this, kills her, and then doesn't... It's a really nice jacket, though. It's evidence, <laughs> too. Like, if his plan was to just leave and be like, I don't know where she is, then you don't want her wearing the jacket, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think that, that entire lie of Tony not being involved... Uh, wouldn't fly. I like that we're also spending a lot of time laying out how would we kill this teenage girl. Well, it's not hard. I think you. I think you got to be like, I'm with them. I'm with them. I'm in the I'm involved in the death, but it's an accidental death. That's the play you got to do. Mm-hmm. You're like, I was with her and we were kissing and we were so passionate that we lost balance and then she fell. It's some sort of acrobatic sex move because yeah. then the cops will be like, you're kind of cool uh, that you tried that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you the cop's up. like I can never get the angle right when you're standing <laughs> no I totally get it kid it, I, my, my wife slips all the time just picture picture the cop in the crime scene with like life flashing everywhere going you're pretty cool like, just, <laughs> cop just says nice nice, nice. Uh, nice. alright let me uh. take you home do you want to stop anywhere else on the way <laughs> I spit out my drink all over my table ball. That's how good that was. The the, the whole like uh, Tony flip scene ends <laughs> ends with something I find very funny, um, which is Tony thinks about his dad's gun, which takes mm-hmm. shotgun shells for some reason, <laughs> like a pirate gun or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> blunderbuss he's like yeah. he's he's like my dad's pistol which takes shells it's, it's like no that's not what okay but uh i've played doom guys like we we know this like they're they're not called shells <laughs> for your pistol <laughs> unless it's a pistol that shoots shotgun shells which yeah maybe it's like a custom made gun <laughs> which sounds like a doom gun it's like a yeah. little blunderbuss yeah. yeah but uh Meg's like, hey, hot stuff, ain't you gonna kiss me? And Tony's like, oh, yeah, right. And he kisses his girlfriend while thinking about his dad's gun. <laughs> yeah, that's an insane chapter end. I, I really stuck with that. Even if Tony didn't do it, which we'll find out soon, he's, yeah. still, fu- he's still fucked up and he's got to get some help. But, yeah, he needs a lot of help. N- now, listener, you might be thinking, how the hell did Tony not do it? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you might be thinking to yourself, what's going on here? Who who are these people? Well, the surprise party rolls around. Uh, Ellen is briefly horrified when she's surprised, but she's not really a character, despite being a big part of this last (laughs) chunk of the book. Yeah. And everyone at the surprise party goes, trauma, 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 and they all run at her. (laughs) Dwayne sucks and is a sex pest. Yes. Brian shows up and uh, turns the whole party on its head by being like, I am a fourth level wizard and I shall now bring Evan back from the dead. And Tony's like, no, no. It's absolutely crazy. The door opens up. Evan appears within the door. And Tony's like, I killed him and just screams it for some reason. Yeah, Yeah. just confesses it. Yeah. Uh, And then the chapter. He's got his dad's uh, blunderbuss. Blunderbuss pistol. Like, sawed uh-huh. off blunderbuss. Mm-hmm. He pulls it out from his cool jacket that he will never lend to anybody. <laughs> yeah. Not even his dying girlfriend that he's It's like calling. a Michael Jackson jacket, right? It's like it, a red It's the bad jacket, for jacket. sure. Yeah. yeah. The lights go out. Mm-hmm. Dwayne kicks the gun somehow out of Tony's hand and shoots him in the shoulder. Now Dwayne mm-hmm. has the gun. And Dwayne's like, I killed Evan, you idiots. And everyone's like, what? So he takes Ellen and Meg below into the basement because no one will look for them in the basement they'll all be searching the woods yeah he's got a double hostage situation which i think hard to do very hard to very hard to handle uh and i love that his idea is what you said kevin to go into the basement because no one will think they'll look there even though they walk through a crowded party down to the basement with the with the two girls at gunpoint yep when this happened Uh (laughs) yeah uh i just go on (laughs) literally screamed out loud this sucks. <laughs> it's so enraging. I I stood up and I said, "What?" 
Yeah, Kevin, you, the book literally moved you. I was out of moved your by this yeah. fiction. Yeah, it's absurd. We learn because Ellen's in a talking mood right about mm-hmm. now. We learn Ellen and Tony were actually a thing, and Evan found out and went to the woods with a gun. So Ellen and Tony are like, well, he's really going to want to talk to us as a unit. So we, <laughs> we better should go, go together. together. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It'll be, the, it'll be the adult thing to do is talk to him as a, as a yeah. couple. Yeah. And uh, Tony and Evan have another scuffle. The gun goes off and Tony is like, oh, no, I've killed. I've killed. I've, I've simply killed. I've killed. I've killed. I've killed. I'm a killer. <laughs> I have killed. And Brian shows up and is like, hey, guys, what's going on? And they're like, Brian. You saw everything, right? And Brian's like, um, I'm just walking through these woods, guys. I don't know if I'm like, nope, Brian, you saw everything. You're a part of this now. <laughs> Brian goes, Brian goes, uh, let me roll deception check. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> he rolls a one and he is a part of the blood pact. Yeah. Yeah. Tony threatens everyone's lives uh, and they all walk away from the body. <laughs> Guess who else is in the woods? None other than Mr. Dwayne. Yes. Uh, who shows up creepily uh out of the mist and is like what's this the corpse of my rival uh no not yet dead still warm he puts his ear up to his mouth to feel his breath and is like ah i'll kill him with a rock no one will ever know he uses the gun that went off to shoot him anyway because everyone thinks that he already shot himself this is a loose a loose tendril from a Shakespeare play that Shakespeare th- discarded hundreds of years ago, and somehow, <laughs> yeah, somehow R.L. Stein took it and grafted it onto his story. It it'd be like at the end of Romeo and Juliet if like Mercutio, that's the only other character I can remember, <laughs> came by and saw them dead, and it was like, oh, but they're actually not dead. They probably want to be dead. Let me just I'm kill gonna them. Shoot them. Yeah. I'm gonna strangle them. them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let me just let me just run them through with my sword. But it's a gun with sword written on the side, like Romeo plus Juliet. The thing is, like the the Ellen and Tony thing is already a pretty good twist. Right, it kind of already ties everything together. And if that's all it was, I honestly would have been like, you know what? That's not super surprising. But at least all came together. It, and then the Dwayne thing is fucking insane. Yeah, because like the whole time we're all thinking Tony, right? Like we're like, Tony did this. And yeah. then we find out that Tony did, quote unquote, do it. And then you're like, all right, how are they going to, how are you going to surprise me a little bit? The Ellen twist, like you said, is kind of like, because the whole time I'm reading this, I'm like, all right, so <laughs> Ellen was there when, because we know that Tony killed him, right? We've, we've been in Tony's mind. Yeah. And he knows this. Yeah. Tony believes he killed him. Yes. Yeah. What's, what, What's the motive for Tony killing Evan? And what's and the and what's yeah. the and what's the motive for Ellen to not say anything, even when she's asking constantly? She's asking mm-hmm. Meg, "Are you still dating Tony?" This incredibly loaded question she keeps yeah. asking, and you're like, "Why is she? What is the deal with this?" And if you found this out at the end, like you said, Kyle, I would have been like, "Okay, cool, that's fine. Like, I'm not gonna be mad yeah. at it, I'm, but I'm not gonna be impressed." But then this is just, <laughs> this is just absurdity it's just you know what this is this book is the telltale heart but instead of people (laughs) doing the murder nobody did the murder and everybody (laughs) just has social anxiety and they think they did the murder somehow and by the way meg's response to my best friend and my boyfriend uh cheated on me behind my back also my boyfriend is a mur thought he was a murderer uh and her response to that is no wonder he's been depressed. <laughs> yeah, she has no issue. She's like, wowie zowie. <laughs> she's almost that's too empathetic. I, I think she might be too empathetic, guys. I don't think that's empathy. <laughs> yeah, that's something is like closed off in you in that point. <laughs> okay. It's it is a it's uh an innie em- empathy. It's like the, it's a re- or an Audi empathy. It's like reverse empathy in a way. I sure. think she's thinking, do you think I still have to do my psych paper if <laughs> Is this like kind of when your roommate dies in college and you yeah, get all A's yeah. for the semester? It's got to be like that. I think Meg is thinking in this moment, did anyone notice that I used silver markers for the invitations? Because I really- <laughs> I worked hard on those. I worked really hard. Did she even redo them? Because they got <laughs> cut up. They got ripped up. It's it's hard to root for Meg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she is such a mess. It's this whole, like the back half of this book. I was like, oh, Meg seems okay. She's innocent. And then- the whole back half of this book, you're like, God, 
what is wrong with you? Uh, May, you're <laughs> you have major problems. Yeah. It, it's like a it's almost like a Fargo type situation that we're dealing with here. <laughs> Except people aren't yeah. aren't even like uh, dim-witted enough to be like likable <laughs> because of their dim-wittedness. Yeah. They I, should all know better is the, is the, is what I'm trying to say. Shame on them all. Shame on them. Shame, all. On, them shame all. on this book and shame on them all. As Wendy Williams says, death, <laughs> death to all death of them. To all of them. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Meg says to Ellen, whispers fastball special. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hell yeah. And they do their classic team up attack where Ellen uh, <laughs> grabs Meg uh, as as a ball in one <laughs> arm and then hucks her at Dwayne. This is this really happens, dear listener, if you don't yeah. believe us, read the book. Megan, Megan unsheaths her adamantium claws yes, and cuts yeah. off Dwayne's head. <laughs> yeah. Read the book. And then grabs a frying pan and hits uh, Dwayne over the head. That part's it. true. You, it's better that you think it's that, listener. <laughs> it's... <laughs> yeah. it's better that you think it's that so Dwayne being defeated they take the gun away from him and Ellen says man you sure know how to throw a party and for some reason <laughs> Meg does not say bitch you stole my boyfriend yeah <laughs> no they're still best friends <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't there also been something kind of like i know they wouldn't but wouldn't there have been some sort of poetic about seeing knocked out Dwayne on the ground and going like well let's just shoot him yeah and did it to some yeah yeah <laughs> tidy it up double tap you're not batman shoot, the, shoot that guy <laughs> <laughs> and then we have our denouement our denouement is simply uh we're back in mike uh the the kid who looks like evan's room and for a split second i was like who the fuck is mike <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then I remembered that it's Shannon's brother who looks like Evan. Uh, they're sticking his stinky clothes into a thing so that he can leave yeah. to go back to school. And we get another parties joke, and that's about it. And Tony's just out there. Yes, Tony's like out there. I think maybe gonna go to an institute or something. But they implied definitely... he's getting some help. Yeah, there's a definitely a strong implication that Meg is going to date Mike. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. yes there is. We're... This is just like the end of the first book where it's like, well, these two heterosexual teens need to get together. The two somehow least worst people in this book uh, are going to get together. It's the only that you have to. I, it, it was a farce. So some people have to get married at the end. Right. My, Mike's sure. only the least worst person because he does nothing but walk through a door. <laughs> what What does Mike? Yeah. What does Mike know about this party, by the way? Mike is being contacted by Brian who he yeah. has some sort of relationship with, but doesn't sound like that strong. Does Mike know that, hey, you're going to come into this party and oh. we're going to scare Ellen and make her think that... He, he does know because Shannon went to Brian uh, while Brian was bedridden and Shannon and Brian planned the whole thing. To get them to confess, I guess? Yeah. And they're like, listen, what you're going to do is, Mike, you're going to walk through the door after Brian says his wizard garbage. And then... <laughs> Tony is going to pull out his father's gun. Then the power yeah. is going to cut out. Then Dwayne is going to take that gun. <laughs> and then Dwayne, the truth will out is what we're saying. And then we will fastball special him. Tony's being hit not just with the fact that Evan's back from the dead, but magic's real. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. It, it's a lot to deal with. But when you're young and you figure out that magic's real, then it, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot better. I I think Mike was probably just like, yeah, whatever. I'll scare some teens. Is yeah. there beer? <laughs> like, fuck it. Can I drink in the closet? Okay. I just got to walk through a doorway. You All know right. what I got to say? Makes party pretty cool. Pretty A pretty good party. Pretty good party. Some good stuff happened there. Worth dying over. Yeah. That's when they've been to. I am pretty upset that there was never any scene where we followed Meg to like a party store. <laughs> just kind of got to see because <laughs> i don't really know what the theme was or like what the kind of, it, it really was like i felt like yeah. rl once again was really doing some literature as you were saying really doing some solid description yeah. of locations and then we get to the party i'm like well, what the fuck is what did that look like paint a picture bud my lingering question is apparently meg got permission to use this abandoned house to have an yeah. absolute rager of a party. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Who was the adult that was just like, yeah, you teens can have an unsupervised party in the woods? It's her dad, right? He That guy just kind of wants to be left alone. Like, he's just sort of, yeah, all right, yeah, use the house. Yeah, he's there. like, yeah, just don't mess up my den. Maybe maybe we'll learn more about the property rights in Fear Street later books, but I'm kind of wondering if just, like, all of Fear Street is just sort of, like, public grounds. You either own a house or there's just, like, hey, yeah, we got, like, a haunted. It kind of like, feels like it's a park. Swing. If you need, yeah, a park. Uh, we got like a roller rink. If you need a haunted roller rink, like Ooh. we got everything here at Fear Street. There's a cool graveyard. Well, Kyle, how is Fear Street in your opinion? <laughs> you know, it was too real. If I'm honest, <laughs> it's that's it what I'm too saying. Real for me. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Put a ghost yeah. in there, not a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it it really needed a Jason. It needed uh, yeah. it needed something. Or it needed Tony. I, I wish Tony had just had a straight up split personality that and he called yeah. himself something else. I would have uh-huh. that. Or an alien clone or a wizard Minimum. duplicate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, a doppelganger. A golem. Yeah. Uh, the, the only the only interest in stuff of this book really was when the book would jump to Tony or the killer's POV yeah. as he's yeah. like considering murder running over meg or pushing well, like, he like Kevin, blacks right. out during the during the car thing yeah that's yeah, right no, he really like he is he's like a dissociative disorder sort of thing and like that is not to stigmatize mental illness but that is scary in that like oh these people are in danger because tony is not getting the help he needs well rl is certainly ready to to, to stigmatize mental illness <laughs> yes, Absolutely. yes and poverty and cats <laughs> he's also definitely I, I was avoiding saying this, but RL's definitely trying to insinuate that Meg has a learning disability, right? <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> she, like, can't focus on her work. She can't get it done. She's getting extensions. She can't put together all these simple clues. Like <laughs> You're saying she has ADD, basically? At minimum, yeah. At minimum. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They didn't know what that was back then in the 90s, yeah. Yet, right? Yeah, I don't 80s. think so. They just called it fast think. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, your brain's not going the speed limit there. <laughs> Slow down. That, I mean, that's been a, that's been a street. Uh, Kyle, did you, did you at least have fun reading it, or was it you know? Or did you enjoy yourself in, in any way? No, I, honestly, I was enjoying it. it. I read it in one. I read it in one sitting, mm-hmm. and so it definitely drove me to the end. And I think when they finally revealed the Tony thing, I, I was at least like invested to the bitter yeah. end uh-huh. uh yeah. so no it, w- it was fun i definitely wanted spooks but this will do it was it was good i'll settle for teens <laughs> came for spooks settled for teens traitorous yeah. teens damn those traitors uh we we tried real hard to find any sort of book that was going to cross over with what you do on your podcast Kyle. well you have multiple podcasts mm-hmm. yes um lljk and yesterday is tomorrow today would you like to talk about a little about them we could for long story short we couldn't find any goosebumps book that covers the topics you do no. so maybe you can explain a little bit like listeners why they should check out your show Oh, a nice little plug right here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah if you uh, enjoyed my sultry voice at all, invading your podcast, uh, I have two other podcasts, one that we're almost finishing our first season of called Yesterday's Tomorrow Today, in which we only talk about movies that take place in futures that have already happened. It's beautiful. Nice. Beautiful idea. Uh, like, uh, you, you know, we talk about Back to the Future too, because it happens in 2015 mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, and we also don't really talk about the movies. We just talk about the dumb futures. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a, a, a past idea of what the future will be that we are already living. Yeah. Correct? Like, uh, we actually had Chad on for uh, to do The Purge. Which I believe takes took place in 2022 and felt too real. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <laughs> but it's really fun. I, I would love for y'all to check it out. And I have a podcast called LOL JK, which has, we've been doing for like a decade. And it's just us talking about dumb shit like people marrying ghosts and weird <laughs> animal genitals and things of that nature. The good stuff. The good stuff. It's really like a potpourri podcast. Is that fair to say? Like a... A grab bag. It's a grab bag. I I would say that you're showing up for the uh the camaraderie and the chemistry and the bits. Those are the best kinds of shows. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Not for here. You come here for hard hitting critiques. That's what you do, Goosebuds. Yeah, it's what I love the most about this. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> 
We're not like other podcasts. <laughs> We're different. <laughs> you remove your paint-stained overalls. Oh my god. Yeah. You're a beautiful podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Take my glasses You're, off. The glasses oh my god. Off. I like that movie. Yeah, uh, check out check out Kyle's podcast. Yeah, uh, yesterday's tomorrow today is is a great idea for a podcast. I think that's a, good, a brilliant idea. For Thank you. It's very specific. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, if you want to check out our podcast, you're doing that. Hello, welcome. You did it. Uh, but if you want more of that, you could go to our patreon.com slash goosebuds, where not only are you pledging your support for the show lets us make this show, but you get access to bonus Camp Goosebud episodes. We put out one every month. And at this point, if you subscribe, uh, there's like dozens upon dozens of Camp Goosebud episodes. It's all banter. It's all us just hanging out around the digital campfire, kind of like LOLJK and just making each other laugh. Mm -hmm. I love that. Patreon.com slash Goosebuds. I solve all kinds of fears on that one. (laughs) You do. (laughs) It's true. Solves my fear. Uh, Kevin, I think you got something you want to... Hi, Check. yes. Um, my name is Kevin. I've been this voice. Um, uh, I was. Uh, if you liked all of my webs and lies, uh, then you might enjoy my <laughs> other podcast, Pretend Friends, uh, which is a actual play RPG system where we actually play my RPG, the one I wrote and developed with my friends, Space Kings. Uh, Woo-woo! Kyle's played it. I played that system. It's a good system. It's a good oh, one. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Uh, do you remember what your character was? Uh... I, what was mine? Oh my god, are you making your, are you asking your, your DM what your character was? <laughs> <laughs> your character was uh, a caveman who had discovered uh, technology and I think a time machine? Oh, he was taken to, uh, on board an alien ship to a zoo and kept alive and then came back. But then before then, I think we played another game where my guy was like some sort of fucked up archer. I just remember he killed a child by shooting an arrow up someone's butthole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a big character I had a lot of plans for, and Kyle just just split them in twain. <laughs> nice. It was a group effort. <laughs> if that sounds fun and silly to you, uh, you might like Pretend Friends, uh, the, the podcast I do with Paul and occasionally Chad. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you might like the Space Kings system, which is available now at spacekings.space and as a delicious hardcover full color book at book.spacekings.space. <laughs> and I also do other things. If you've, if you've been listening to me for a while and you like my stuff and you want to support my work, you can uh, join my Patreon at givekevinmoney.com. And uh, you can follow along uh, some other tabletop projects I'm working on and some other secret projects and some video games that I made. So, yeah, those are my things, I think. I should do more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do too many things and I apologize. <laughs> I have too many URLs. Never, never I, apologize for being so prolific. I got to justify all of the thousands of dollars I spend on funny URLs <laughs> by doing many, many things. Give Kevin money. Give, Give Kevin money. Help me pay for URLs. Paul, you want you got anything you want to you want to share the good news that you did a great nah. golf episode? Nah, I'm good. Continue. Paul, you want to continue show? Nah, I'm good. You want to continue show? <laughs> That's okay. I'm good. Paul? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Pass. Chad, and I, Chad and I might go continue show if you don't want to continue show. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go check out continue you show what, on YouTube. You can do whatever the hell it's you the want. Funniest commentary. On, on video games I've ever seen. I'm turning a corner into fear solving now, guys. I'm over that. <laughs> <laughs> Got fears to deal with. Decades of, of work and you're just you're solving. Okay, that's good. Hey, if you have any fears you need uh, Paul to solve, why don't you subscribe to our Patreon uh, and message Paul <laughs> back at, and he back will solve your fear for, for one month's Patreon. He will Send solve to your fear. photo, your location, a list of all of your fears. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Solve. Allergies. Um, what is Passwords, that? social security number. You give us all rights to sell them to anybody that we want. Yeah. <laughs> but the good news is you won't be afraid anymore. And that's worth everything. Kyle, thank you again for joining us. I'm sorry this was such a back and forth, both milk toast and also got a little spicy points in it, but it was wild at uh, the end. What are you talking about? That was crazy. It got wild at the end. It was a spicy milk for sure. It was like a chocolate milk, but with sriracha instead of. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, but just like the chunks were down at the bottom, so you didn't get it until the end of the shake. A spoonful yeah. of chili crisp was dumped into the chocolate milk, and you get it all at the end. <laughs> I would drink that. <laughs> Me too, actually. Sure. It, it kind of sounds good. sounds pretty good. It sounds good. Yeah. Drink it fast uh, before the crisp doesn't crisp anymore. <laughs> well, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. We love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.
This episode of Goose Buds is brought to you by our wonderful Patreon supporters, especially those highestly vaulted in the Book of Names. The Book of Names. Starting with Stefan Jive Turkey Kuabara. Hollis Hornbeak. Low Belly Hate Me. Nathan Dolezal. Mike Lanteri. Mickey C. Michael McDowell. Hey Josh Rob. Cameron Murphy Audio. Buddy Morrill. Mel Dipson. Alecade. Afsheen. Dango Twist. Zenta Bumps. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. It changed. Stealth Bates. Robert Moon. Brian Wells. Jason Crooker. Miguel Pardo. John Keaty. Clay Castle. Galf. The Juggalobalist. Slink demands paranoia shop content. Of course you would, Slink. You slink demon. Move. You demon monster coming for my dad's junk. Gregory D. Warren. <laughs> Cody Redfield. Bradford Coulter. Aiden pledges their hammer to Dwarf Daddy Kevin. Thank Ooh. you, Dwarven Child. Star Dwarf Slinks. Chosen One. Levi Than. Up and Champ. Jonas Engman. The John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Thank you. Carl. Anthony Mulberry. Yanni Markovina. Elusive Koala. Shrew Applegate. Christian Vanskever. Brooke X. Jesus Christ. Jeremy Lowe. Brian Hobgood. Zach Connor. Patreon underscore donator comma yo. Joe Spooky Digital Ghost Tierney. Tom Whittem. Lord Cornwallis. Andrew Jadzik contributes for approval some Ice Church Schism faction names like Methodicists, Frostbitarians, <laughs> and Cold Folix. I like Frostbitarians because it's not even like a pun. Yeah. <laughs> Frostbitarians is like the winner. It's a one. real Presbyterian way to go about it, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Murphy P. Carson Birkenbean. <laughs> I don't know. It was pre no, I, I get it. Tevin Ticklebean met an, an apple man? <laughs> what? You know what? I'm in, I'm hooked into that story. Tell I'm me more. I'm terrified of the Apple Man. It's just we've gone so long without a chapter update in the story of Tevin Ticklebean, and now we get this <laughs> dramatic <laughs> reveal. Where Apple did they Man. end up? I don't know. I think also the fact that Apple Man's not capitalized, but Tevin Ticklebean <laughs> does, makes it Apple Man more insidious. It implies there are many Apple Men. Sean Minogue. Rushy Glenn. Wiggle it. Alicia Grafe. Luke LaFontaine. Matt McClellan. Chip Handsome. Tanya Turtle. Juan Jalapena. Timothy Misodolakis. Keith Halcrow. Jonas Blatterman. Clay McCarty. Parker Lee. Ham underscore boat. The Crow Fence, but seasonal. Ooh, pumpkin spiced. Raymond Hernandez. <laughs> Matthew Sutton. Jeffrey Owen Cahi. Kelsey Kinneman. Russell Kastberg. Xavier Jimenez Castillo. Ooh, Scotty Pippen. Joe, regular name, Scott. Chris Putricus. Alex Moon, the robotic dog. Flamily. Dungeon Kappa. Tobias Clark. Zach Ware. Lip Duck. Ice Acolyte Hamster turns his cup of ice lava down. No! Yes. Oh, the ice. Yeah. <laughs> Meet Virginia. Luke Noodles. Sam Bambino. Hugh Boland. Estamena, Lord of Paul's Pants. Nathan Remick. Chris. Spooky Gym Shorts and a 4XL t shirt. Stiffy Nelson. <laughs> That's a big stiffy if it's 4XL. <laughs> got a flagpole in there god damn dude maybe you should talk to a doctor about that that's a big it's a big dog shirt we all know it's a big dog shirt. <laughs> it's a big dog shirt it's a tc tuggers <laughs> need more kimchi putting a different meaning to the term tc tugger <laughs> tc tuggers it's not a joke shirt <laughs> streak lee wood reed steuben dick kieran mcnamara diet soda lamb the aspiring demon lord of friendship huh Joey Evans. Jackie Ledoux. Coleman Laguza. Tacky Tammy. Carewise Gamgee. A pair of Scots. Levi Kidder. I had a foursome <laughs> this summer. I don't want to tell my parents, but I would like someone to tell me they're proud of me. Good job. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty sick, I guess. Gotta stay hydrated, and I bet there's a whole spreadsheet you gotta fill yeah. out. Hoped you hoped you wrapped everything tight. You know, you got proud little, of you. You got a lot of consent there, which is cool. Yeah. <laughs> Three other people said, yes, be naked near me. And that's pretty cool. Impressive. You could probably tell your parents. <laughs> <laughs> David Gray. Cameron Hansen. A wild, swaggy Yola Squire appears. Throw a ball at it. Matthew Brittato. Bryce Deary. The Deadly Bold. 
I am Cornholio. I need TP for my bunghole. Generally depressing. Lava Church is launching a magma missile at Ice Church. You have 24 hours to evacuate. What yes. the fuck? What the? No, no, guys, we are, you're in Ice Church. Yeah. <laughs> you better start getting some cold stuff together because we have a lot of lava heading towards Ice Church. We got to build a snow fort right now. Listen, my Ice Church persona is just a guy who's like down for whatever. He's always going to say yes like a total creep. He's joker so. is what you're saying? Yeah, he's joker-pilled and boner-fied. <laughs> I feel like I'm the only one trying to keep Ice Church frozen. And it's yes. really troubling. <laughs> Melt the ice. Melt the ice. Boney! Ben Bohan. Jonas and Voldson. Some of Chad's bird friends who now live in the rafters at Ice Church. Aw, but they can come down whenever they want. Joe Gorman. Burgers or... Er- Burgers or a turn coop. Burgers over turned cup. Boiling. Free the entity. No! <laughs> yes! Nicholas Maloney. Anthony forgot to make a funny name this month. Don't worry, you still did. You'll get it next time, Anthony. Tiffany Lee. Eric Horwitz. Thomas Jansis. Mutant. <laughs> I'm still thinking about burgers over turn cup. <laughs> <laughs> burger, 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 burger. I can't stop laughing at how stupid I said that. Mutant astronaut. Lucretia McEvil. Germ juice. Calamity Carl. Nick Johnson. Henry Torbert. Boner guard Epsilon <laughs> Hamilton, a.k.a. Hambone, host of Radio Bone Air. That's so many titles. <laughs> Adam Knapp. Ryan Carroll. Logan Derby. Jeremy Bowser. Chick. Brad Schmelzer. <laughs> Megan McCormick Mason. Callum, Mr. Misfire West. Skeletorin. Ninja Breadman. Mandy Nasty. Yoplin. Hello to Kiss Ferenchlin. Aaron Lord. Philip Reynolds. Dr. Chuck. Nate Bit G. Mr. Unimportant wants to know if you can pee on the ice yes. church floor. Yes. It depends yeah. on your Pee freely. You know what? <laughs> I'll say yes. Knowing that it's going to overall contribute more to the ice. Ah, I will say right. that. It's, it's not quite the lava we're expecting it to be, Kevin. Nothing more refreshing than a nice cold piss. Scott Wable. Ryan R. Davis will not step in the piss. You can pee in regular church. Robot Arena. Rocco. Oh, may gal, bay gal, a.k.a. Omega <laughs> bagel, a.k.a. George, a.k.a. Josh. Congrats on being in the Joe Paris special, Josh. Evdog. SSJ Trogdor. Llama Lad. Greg Musto. Mike Spaghetti Jones. Sprinkle Buns. Hi, first time, long time. Allie Rose. Hilda B. Chris. The discography of Blues Traveler and inhalation of skunk weed enhances Polly Shore's <laughs> piloting of the Gundam Sandrock. That tracks. Always saying it. I understood everything in that sentence. Me too. Yup. Liam Rogers. Soggy Newspapers. Ollie Sutz. My cart. Kate the Great. John W. Dakota Camp. Chris Kulik. Saturn Video. Gulliver. Cassandra Harris. Wade Norcross. Kiwi Blurb. Serial Killer X. Oh, that last name was my favorite. Kira, that was convincing as hell. Kira mm-hmm. and Brian are big fans. And big Nick Lane. Blake Cavan. Dan Antonio. Kit Bush. Sarah Sin. You over the moon. Dennis Wright. Crash Callahan and the Voodoo Death God. Farah. Yeah. CM. Cameron Ganzevelt. Several upset horses. <gasps> Jesse. Goblin Grader, the thawed one of the one true room temp church emerges. <gasps> There's another church? Splitter. Matt Septor. Greg Gervasi, a.k.a. Viva Zed. What's up, Greg? Cole Gleason. Chris Curdo. This news is scary. I am to marry in February the 14th, that day at 11. Da-da! Michael Malloy. Jesse Box. B! Anthony Rodriguez. We forgot to change our Patreon name for a while, but Jeff Webb, big baby, and I still appreciate all the ongoing bits in the book. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no, we don't know what that's going to say. Could it be book? We don't know. S! Kyle O'Neill. Alpaca acquaintance turns their cup anti-clockwise. Yes. Huh. I mean, yeah. The hottest direction. <laughs> Taraku, the thing that goes doink in the anime. Doink. Goonkahoot saw Undertaker at a Walgreens. Sick. Sick. That is fucking cool. Spencer Y. Wonder skin, it feels like real skin. Tan your hide. It feels like real hide. <laughs> Brony underscore Danza. It's kind of like Tony Danza. <laughs> <laughs> Beard dear. Anthony Stoker. 
Wunderskin. Again. Wait, again? Back again? Max Schism Advocate pledges his cup facing upward. Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> no, wait. Yes, I think. Yes. Doglips underscore Kajoyian. Chris is struggling to think of a fun name and is open to suggestions. Try Apple Man. <laughs> Reb Comics. Paul Sentient My Buddy Doll, a.k.a. the real Mr. Bad Boy. Yeah. I'm a bad boy. <laughs> Hurt, a.k.a. Cyber Bully. Talene McKnight got married to Ross, not from Friends, McKnight. Hey, congrats. Congrats. Blarbin pours orthogonally. Yes. I, yeah. um, I mean, yes. We do. Yes. Yeah. Starship <laughs> Nine. Logan Kilgus. Girthworm Jim. Boss Veratu. Why Paul is leader? You know why. <laughs> Proper spaceman. Smellities. <laughs> Angelo Edward Longton Santone. Canadian Ghoul. Bacon the Awkwardly Unseen. R.I.P. Kevin Cole Baja <laughs> blasted with a heart cannon by the King of Space. Thank you, Baja children. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Snyder, Grandmaster of Spells and Enchantments, Ooh. pledges his wizard staff and ancient tome to Paul. God damn. Who got a pledge this month? It was me. <gasps> Lumo Nuba. Elodie. Brian Udath. Sterner Stock. Kyle Welch. Clint Deerking. Agent Smiskatonic. A tall glass of dumb bitch juice. Nowhere Lucas. Brian Sika. Brian Starro. C.L. Reagan. Justin. Ben Flolios Sire. Whew, that was a tough one, Chad. Did I say that right? I no, think. I, I, I think you nailed it. Sh Shana S. Jaybird. Gumblegore. And welcome, Bob Cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping Bob Cabbage would get in here. Uh, hello and well met, <laughs> Jig Ass Biddies 007. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Are you playing Halo right now? <laughs> Welcome, number one gnome. And welcome, and thank you very much, jolly old jewels. Say goodbye to your souls, bitches. Say goodbye to your gamer score. Thank you all so much. We love you. Have a good, have a good time. Enjoy the next episode. Seriously, you're stuck. You're so stuck right now. <laughs> you're never leaving. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Goodbye forever. <laughs>